Welcome to another edition of the Rome News Tribune's Face-to-Face -face Studio Central. I'm Doug Walker, and our special guest today is Georgia Court of Appeals Judge Billy Ray from Lawrenceville. And uh, Judge Ray was up in Rome to speak to the Rome Rotary Club, a guest of uh, Judge Norman Fletcher. And uh, I guess uh, w without going through the long uh, bi biographical background, Judge, you, have, uh, you, you started out in the state senate in terms of politics, and then was just appointed to the, uh, to the Court of Appeals last year. Tell us a little bit about the difference between serving in the legislature and serving on the bench. Well, uh, you know, as a, as a judge, our job is simply to interpret the law and apply it in cases. Uh, we're not really supposed to be involved in policy. Uh, as a state senator, that's what your job is, is to decide policy. So you just have to wear a different hat and think in different terms. Okay. I'm glad you, you responded that way because that's, that's a question or, or a, uh, an issue that I have, have always uh, wondered about and occasionally been troubled by. Uh, we have a constitution in Georgia. We have a, a U.S. constitution. And yet, quite frequently on some of these, uh, these multi-judge uh, panels, particularly at the Supreme Court level, obviously more so there, we see five, four opinions based theoretically on the same law. How much does politics play uh, in, in the courts? Well, I mean, the, in whether we're talking about statutes or we're talking about the Constitution, I mean, there are words on the paper. Uh, you're right that people read those in different ways. We, we all come to the Court of Appeals or to the Supreme Court of Georgia or, or to the federal courts with a little bit different political background, maybe a little bit different experience, and so perhaps the way we interpret what we read varies. Obviously it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, I think one of the things that we're blessed in Georgia is is that whether we're talking about judges that had a political background in one party or the other, our state is a real conservative state really throughout, and so the judges that we have on the state level have fairly similar philosophy. So you not you don't really get the wide divergence of opinions on the statewide level that you might on the federal level. Let me ask you one question about background. Uh, when you were in Gwinnett County, uh, you were involved uh, in in the drug treatment court uh, or, or drug court. Tell us a little bit of how that worked because that's been something that's been gaining some impetus statewide. Well, you're right. Uh, I, I was one of the first judges in Georgia to start, not the first, but one of the first to start a drug court. And it was, it was really a different way of thinking about the criminal justice system. I, I came from a background where my family was touched by crime when I was young, so I had a very tough on crime mentality as a legislator and as a, as a trial judge, but became frustrated as a trial judge because I kept seeing the same folks coming into my court year after year, particularly on low-level property crimes, theft crimes, drug crimes. And so I was willing to kind of go out on a limb like a lot of judges and put a little bit more emphasis on treatment. And, and the way the drug courts work is that we force defendants to go through treatment. Uh, we drug test them constantly. If they test positive for drugs, and that's going to happen, we punish them, but we don't wait for months to do it until they've had a trial. We do it right away. It's not quite as long as perhaps it would have been if they had just gone to court. But it's progressive treatment so that uh, the more they get in trouble, the longer their sentence. Uh, if they're successful uh, in the long run, uh, statistics will tell you that they have a much greater chance of staying away from drugs if they go through the treatment program than if we just send them to jail. If we send them to jail, we know what's going to happen. They're going to get out and they're going to use again and they're going to steal again. And so, you know, we're, we're after trying to prevent that from happening. So, do you have any idea what kind of a percentage of, of Georgia's offenders are, are incarcerated because of drug-related problems? I could only give you anecdotal evidence, and that is most of them. Because just about everybody that I saw as a Superior Court judge, no matter what the crime was, had some kind of drug background to them, whether they were users or sellers or involved in the drug trade. Uh, I do know this, though. Uh, we know that in Georgia and nationally that if someone goes to prison uh, or to, or to long-term jail, that there's a good chance they're going to they're going to be back in jail within five years, about 60 percent of the time. For those that have gone to a drug treatment court and succeeded in it, completed it their recidivism rate is about 10, 12 percent, maybe 15 percent 
over a five-year period of time. So the, the, it's not going to work in every case, or we, it would be zero, but it's going to work in most of the cases. Now, the, the Georgia Court of Appeals, uh, tell the audience a little bit about what, what types of cases you typically hear there, because I don't believe it's a, it's, it's a typical criminal's appeal, is it? Well, it can be. We, we, we're the intermediate uh, appellate court for Georgia. Just about every appeal that comes from a trial court is going to go to the Court of Appeals first. There are a few things that will go directly to the Supreme Court, like a murder conviction. But other than a murder conviction, every other criminal case will first go through the Court of Appeals. They could eventually go to the Supreme Court if the Supreme Court wants to hear them, if there's some question about whether or not the Court of Appeals made the right decision, or maybe there's a need to harmonize the law and, and have, have policy made from the highest level. But we hear just about every appeal first in Georgia, uh, and we hear just about every civil case first in Georgia would go through us. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe uh, what, what one or two of the most interesting cases without going into any of those obvious things that we can't talk about? Yeah. What, what kind of bizarre cases perhaps you heard? Well, I mean, I heard a, I heard a bizarre case a week ago. Uh, it was a dog bite case, believe it or not. You know, it was your typical dog bite case where, where uh, someone's dog bit someone else. And, uh, you know, kind of an everyday circumstance you don't really expect that to make it to the Court of Appeals, but there it was. And it, it was, uh, that day we had a lot of interesting cases that came before us. Some of the stuff we hear is obviously very tragic cases involving you know, tra uh, you know, sexual crimes or, or people whose lives have been thrown away through drug, drug use. But we hear a little, bit about, a little bit of everything, really. You have a background uh, when, you were, when you were practicing law, uh, I guess probably before the state senate days even, in, in family law, um, have, have you seen many changes, uh, positive changes, or, or is, is an appellate judge in a position to, to make recommendations to the legislature with respect to changes in law? Because I, I know particularly domestic violence cases are cases that, that uh, the, the typical law enforcement officer, they don't like getting involved in too much. Right. Well, for the most part, when, and I, having served in the, in the General Assembly, I get asked to come over and speak sometimes to committees about things. For the most part, judges don't want to, to make statements about policy. We leave that to the, to the legislature's uh, will to make those decisions. But if directly asked, you know, we can certainly make suggestions. We're, we're certainly not naive or shy about making suggestions for changing procedural laws that deal with how cases are handled um, and will, as a matter of course, make those kinds of recommendations. I did, as a Superior Court judge a few years ago, had some input on some changes that were made to custody laws in Georgia where my local representative was heavily involved and heavily invested in that issue and so he asked for my background uh, advice on some changes that he was considering and some of those changes actually were implemented so yeah, that was gratifying to see that. and. Time will tell whether that particular law will, will uh, work out or not. All right. Well, Judge Billy Ray, we appreciate your being with us. Uh, appreciate your coming to Rome and appreciate Judge uh, Fletcher for bringing you to Rome and, and look forward to seeing you again. I look forward to seeing you again on the next edition of Face to Face.